My Limit sets their race format for 2024, but did they also accidentally leak their 17th full-time driver? We'll show you the evidence, plus the ASCS field starts to fill out. It's a big week in Australia and more. Let's go. It's Wednesday, January 17th. I'm Justin Fiedler. This is Dirt Tracker Daily. If you haven't uh, had a chance yet to watch, make sure to tune into the first episode of the Rico Rundown. It dropped yesterday evening on the YouTube channel. I'm going to be taking you inside the Rico Avery Racing Team all season as Rico and the boys get ready to tackle the High Limit Series and the biggest events in sprint car racing. This first episode gets you up to speed on Rico's trip to Western Australia, and he's not done yet down under. Give it a watch. Let me know what you think. I'm super excited for this. Really grateful for the opportunity to partner with Rico. And if you haven't watched the episode, I will drop uh, the link below in the video description. On the high limit front, they revealed their race format yesterday. Uh, it's sort of a mix between the outlaw format, the all-star format with some tweaks thrown in. They will qualify everyone together like the outlaws do, uh, not by heat race like we saw with the all-stars but they will take the fastest qualifier in every heat, push them to start fourth with everyone else in that heat starting straight up. That's just like the All-Stars did it. Under most circumstances, you'll see the heat race winner plus the fastest transfer go to the Knights Dash. And if the quick qualifier from that heat that starts fourth is able to win the heat, they will then start up front in the dash, bypassing the redraw. So basically they get to start up front in the dash, don't have to pull a pill. The B, uh, the B main will line up like the Outlaws do it. Two fastest qualifiers that didn't transfer in from the heat races, they will start on the front row. The other wrinkle here is that on a two-day show, the top three or four drivers in the first feature don't have to qualify for the second night. They will be placed into heat races as effectively the night's fastest qualifiers. So if you think about this, Friday night show, Saturday night show at one racetrack, if you finish top three or top four, depending on the number of cars, you will automatically be placed into heats for the next night. You do not have to qualify. I'm a bit surprised here with Mike Hess and Brad Sweet involved that they went with any sort of invert in the heat races at all. Hess was the outlaw race director when they decided to drop heat race inversions for the 2016 season. And the first year of High Limit as a midweek series did not include any heat race inversions. They were lined up straight, uh, straight up like the Outlaws do it. I feel like formats are always a bit divisive, kind of like the schedules. People have very strong opinions about how they should go or not go. Uh, but I feel like the reaction to the format really seemed to be mostly positive. And if you're curious how that heat race inversion affects heat race finishes, here are some numbers for you from the DirtTracker.com analytics database. Over the past seven outlaw seasons, 63% of heats were won from the pole with 93% won off the front row. With the All-Stars over the previous five years, to kind of give you an example of what those, uh, you know, when you drop the, the fastest qualifier to fourth, 55% of heats were won from the pole with 85% uh, won from the front row. So there is a bit of a difference here. And I think what may skew these numbers for high limit even more uh, is the added benefit for that four starter to race to the front to get that good dash starting spot. That should be some added motivation for those guys to uh, to kind of run through the heat races and not just ride around and get their free pass into the dash. I've seen some questions about provisionals and the choose cone for high limit as well. And uh, competition director, race director Mike has confirmed to me that both are in place for 2024. A provisional system was not used for the midweek series in 2023, but there is definitely an argument to be made for one to be in place for a year-long national series that has so many committed race teams. I know some hate provisionals. They don't bother me at all. I don't care. Also, the choose cone will be used for features only, allowing drivers to choose their lane on restarts, either high or low. We saw that mid, uh, with the uh, midweek series in 2023. Uh, drop me a comment. Let me know your thoughts on the high limit race format. What you think, what you like, what you don't like. Uh, and we'll uh, see what you guys have to say. Uh, also of note with high limit from Tuesday, it appears though they have may have tipped their hand with James McFadden. A promotional graphic for the Red Dirt Way, uh, Raceway show on Tuesday night in April was posted to social media that included a list of drivers. It has the 16 regular full-timers that we already knew about, plus Kyle Larson and Cap Henry, who are slated to challenge for the midweek championship, plus, quote, many more if you look in the uh, bottom right corner there. But in the midst of all of those other names is James McFadden. The social media post was fairly quickly deleted, but the internet never forgets. While some sources have pushed back against the idea, the sentiment I'd been hearing was that Roth would split their cars similar to what Shark Racing has done, but a Kofoid to the Outlaws and McFadden to High Limit. Kofoid has already been announced as an outlaw, but we've been waiting on what McFadden's status would uh, kind of be in the other Roth machine. This slip from High Limit seems to point to McFadden at the very least contending for the midweek title, if not the full schedule outright. 
At this moment as well, this graphic would make it clear that the series doesn't expect any more announcements in the near future for full-time drivers, and it will probably go to Florida with 17 high rollers. And that's what they're calling their full-time teams, high rollers. So stay tuned, fam. We should be getting at least one more driver announcement here from High Limit. Another sprint car series that has released some full-time names for 2024 is the 360 ASCS National Tour. Oklahoma driver Jeffrey Newell uh, was the first to commit. He did that later, uh, late in 2023. He'll tackle the full schedule for the first time. He made nine starts a year ago with a win and four top tens. His victory came in dominating fashion at Lawton Speedway in June. Joining Newell as a rookie will be 23-year-old Bradley Fizzard. Uh, Fizzard was previously a uh, micro-competitor. He started sprint car racing in 2022. He's appeared 15 times with the ASCS the past uh, two seasons. He has a best finish of fifth that came at Caney Valley in 2023. Terry Eason from Oklahoma as well makes it three rookies. Uh, his, uh, he'll join the series full-time as well in 2024. Eason ran just twice with the National Tour in 2023 and is jumping up from the Oil Capital Racing Series uh, where he has four career victories. He's also made scattered starts with the USCS and ASCS Regional Series. Kansas driver Kyler Johnson is full-timer number four. He's returning to the ASCS for year number three. His rookie year in 2022 saw him grab five top tens, uh, and last year was an improvement with 13 top tens to go along with three top fives. He ended up sixth in the final championship standings. Also from Kansas, the final season-long chaser we know about right now is Zach Blurton. He's made scattered starts all over the Midwest. Uh, he was a regular with the United Rebels Sprint Series. He's, uh, he's racked up 40 career wins with that tour. Uh, that tour util utilizes the IMCA Race Saver rules. Blurton actually won on the ASCS National Tour in 2022, leading all 25 laps to uh, beat Blake Hahn at Joaquini Speedway. Still plenty of time here for this field to grow as the ASCS season doesn't start until March 1st, uh, 1st excuse me, 1st, uh, at South Texas Race Ranch. If you want even more dirt racing content this week, check out the uh, new podcast episodes from across the community. Uh, Passing Points has Kale Drake. Dunwich on Dirt has Steve Post. Turn 2 Terribles has Tony Jackson. Plum Wild has Ryan Avila. Getting Up to Speed has Jay Steinberg. And there are new episodes of The Dirt Reporters, The Dirt Nerds, Quick Time, Dirt Track Confessions, Hoagie's Garage, and TJ Slide Wheels. Uh, slide Wheels. Slideways. I cannot talk today. Open Wheels Spectacular. If you'd like to check out all of these shows for yourself, dirttracker.com slash podcast is a good place to start. Uh, that's it for the show today. It's a big week of sprint car racing in Australia, so keep an eye on Clay Preview and Flow Racing if you want to watch. The President's Cup at Avalon was rained out. They will try to run that again on January 24th. The King's Challenge is next. It's Thursday at Borderline Speedway in Mount Gambier. Things will get rolling around 1 a.m. Eastern time here in the States on Thursday morning. That field is expected to include Rico, Corey Eliason, Brock Zierfoss, McFadden, Aaron Reitzel, Justin Peck, Carson Macedo, uh, Chase Randall, Sheldon Honshield, and a whole lot more. And then after the Kings Challenge, teams will head to Warnable to start the grand annual Sprint Car Classic. They should easily be into the triple digits for Sprint Cars there. They're going to run split field prelim programs Friday and Saturday, and then uh, they'll have the big show on Sunday. Here in the States, you can watch the Classic over on Flow Racing. So if you're a Flow Racing subscriber, you will get the uh, Classic included. I hope you guys have a great Wednesday out there. We'll see everybody right back here tomorrow. 